again, welcome all of you to worship this morning. We'll start in just about a minute. Um, I am glad you're here on this beautiful sunny day. Um, of all the places you cho choose to be or might choose to be, um, I'm glad that this is what you have. It is good to be together. Grace to you all and peace in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Whoever you are and wherever you find yourself on the journey of faith, either physically or spiritually, know that you are welcome here exactly as you are to share in the gifts of God so freely given. One thing I ask of you, O oh God, one thing I seek, that I may dwell in your house all the days of my life, to gaze on your beauty and to meditate in your temple. In the beginning, the creator was beguiled by beauty and so set in motion a world of immense beauty and goodness. All beings are beautiful, full of the essence of sacred worth, sensed not by the eyes, but with the spirit. Awaken to beauty. Falling in love with the world. Divine beauty shimmers and shimmies through the universe and in every barrio where someone is singing or weeping, because of beauty, our spirits are enlivened. 
Are you ready? Are you ready for new life? O oh God, prepare my spirit to see and be beguiled by the beauty of life. Amen. I invite you to light your candle now. We try to satisfy our thirst for meaningful life with so many distractions and addictions. Awakening to beauty is to find the well that never runs dry, for it is in beginning to truly see the world with our spirits that our soul's thirst is quenched. The resilience and beauty of the natural world is a sign of hope even when things are difficult. A tree is scorched by fire and yet new sprouts shoot up defiantly reaching toward the sun. A crack in the sidewalk reveals the seeds beneath its surface, just waiting for a chance to break through. Contemplating this resilient beauty draws us back to our own vitality. Know that you too are capable of new life. I invite you now to just take a moment in quiet, slow down the pace of your breathing, your body and your mind and allow your spirit to settle. A prayer to open worship. Holy God, pause us for this moment. Bear us up in this time. Hold us for eternity. We embrace the brokenness of our lives. We believe that you are creating new light that will shine through. We open to your possibilities. And all the people say, Amen. Amen. I invite you now to sing along with Renee and Mike, the hymn of promise.
So for the last couple of weeks, we've been talking with the children about how beautiful our world is, including everything and any, everyone in it. So today I want to invite the kids to search for beauty with me again. I want to send all of you guys, um, you children, on a treasure hunt so that we can see if we can see more beauty and make more beauty. This morning, I want the kiddos to hunt for something that's broken. Let me give you a few minutes and I'm going to stop sharing my screen so that I can see all of you. Let's hunt for something that's broken. Hey, Maddie, let's hunt for something that's broken. Can you find something that's broken? Go find something broken. And once you've found it, I want you to hold it up for all of us to see. Oh, Maddie's got something. I'm... Meg, John, can you unmute our kiddos? I got my deans here working on this, my deacons. Maddie, what have you got there? Broken pencil. What else have we got? You want to do the shorts? Thomas has something. Let me that looks like a broken plant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Broken weed. A broken weed. Uh huh. Cool. So the Bible stories that we're going to read today remind us that God takes care of broken things. Helen, did you have something broken? You want to do that? I found a broken dinosaur Lego piece. <laughs> a broken dinosaur Lego. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to share a fun word with you today, and I hope it'll make you giggle. It's um, wabi sabi. Ever heard that word before? Wabi sabi? It's Japanese. So if you want, you could say it with me or you could just laugh at me. Wabi sabi. Wabi sabi. My pronunciation is not good because I just got it off the internet. I didn't learn it from somebody who actually knows Japanese. But it means what it is, what it means is really cool. It, it's an idea that the Japanese have that everything is beautiful, even things that aren't perfect, things that might have been broken or made in an unusual way. In fact, this Japanese idea says that things that aren't perfect are more interesting than things that are. Things that are broken are more special than things that are whole. Have you ever had a broken arm, broken leg, anybody? Oh, there's a, yes, who? There, Thomas. So did you have a cast? Did they put a cast on that arm? Yeah. Yeah? So when my son was little and um, he had a broken arm, they put a cast on his arm and then his sisters and all of his friends, Thomas, did they write on your cast? Did people make pictures on your cast? No. No? It was like... They made pictures on David's cast and those pictures made us forget about the broken arm underneath because we saw the fun things that were on the outside. God takes care of broken things, but we can help. So one way to start might just be being creative. That uh, Lego dinosaur that's broken, maybe it can be made into something better. Who knows? That's one of the joys that we can have. So I'm going to invite you to pray with me. God of goodness. God of goodness. Thank you for life. Even when things break. Even when things break. Help me. Help me. Help you. Help you. Repair broken hearts. Repair broken hearts. Offer color and love. Offer color and love. For the beauty of the earth. For the beauty of the earth. And Maddie, I bet that pencil of yours, I bet that could draw something beautiful. What do you think? Maybe so. Maybe so. So I have something else I want to share with you this morning, and I'm going to go back to sharing my screen so that you can see it.
This morning, I want to celebrate um, dads, but also just all the people who support us. A reading from the book of Genesis, chapter 21, verses 8 through 21. The child grew and was weaned, and Abraham made a great feast on the day Isaac was weaned. But Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, whom she had borne to Abraham, playing with her son Isaac. So she said to Abraham, cast out this slave woman with her son, for the son of this slave woman shall not inherit along with my son, Isaac. The matter was dis very distressing to Abraham on account of his son. But God said to Abraham, do not be distressed because of the boy and because of your slave woman. Whatever Sarah says to you, do as she tells you. For it is through Isaac that offspring shall be named for you. As for the son of the slave woman, I will make a nation of him also, because he is your offspring. So Abraham rose early in the morning and took bread and a skin of water and gave it to Hagar, putting it on her shoulder, along with the child, and sent her away. And she departed and wandered about in the wilderness of Beersheba. When the water in the skin was gone, she cast the child under one of the bushes. Then she went and sat down opposite him a good way off, about the distance of a bow shot. For she said, Do not let me look on the death of the child. And as she sat opposite him, she lifted her up her voice and wept. And God heard the voice of the boy. And the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, What troubles you, Hagar? Do not be afraid. For God has heard the voice of the boy where he is. Come, lift up the boy and hold him fast with your hand, for I will make a great nation of him. Then God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. She went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. God was with the boy, and he grew up. He lived in the wilderness and became an expert with the bow. Psalm 147, verses 1 through 11. Praise the Lord. 
how good it is to sing praises to our God, for he is gracious and a song of praise is fitting. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the outcasts of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determines the number of the stars and he gives to all of them their names. Great is our God and abundant in power. God's understanding is beyond measure. The Lord lifts up the downtrodden. He casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make melody to our God on the lyre. He covers the heavens with clouds, prepares rain for the earth, makes grass grow on the hills. God gives to the animals their food and to the young ravens when they cry. God's delight is not in the strength of the horse, nor God's pleasure in the speed of a runner. But the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him, in those who hope in God's steadfast love. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Sarah saw the son of Hagar the Egyptian, whom she had born to Abraham. So she said to Abraham, cast out this slave woman with her son, for the son of this slave woman shall not inherit along with my son Isaac. There are many deeply troubling aspects of the story of Hagar's banishment, but for me today, this is the most unsettling part. Sarah demanded that Hagar be cast out of her husband's household. She used her power and privilege to prevent Ishmael, Abraham's firstborn son, from inheriting a portion of his father's wealth. Sarah chose to hoard her husband's resources, demanding that Abraham cast the slave woman out. It appears that Sarah did this without considering the impact her decision might have on that woman and her son, on human beings whose survival was dictated by Sarah's choices. Is there an echo here? Now the fact that God seems to allow, have allowed this to happen, presents a conundrum to me. I can't help but wonder why a God of steadfast love would allow Hagar to be put in such a precarious position. I simply don't have an answer for that. What I do know is throughout the story, God listened to the voices of those who suffered. God recognized and responded to Abraham's agony. God was present with Hagar in her anguish. God listened, God heard. In fact, the entire story turns on the name of Hagar's child, Ishmael. Ishmael, which in Hebrew means God hears. God hears, God heard. God's provision wasn't for Sarah's family alone. God supplied what Ishmael and Hagar needed as well. This is our God, the one who is present in suffering, who hears and points to life-giving water. It might be said that beauty shimmied into the midst of this story's brokenness, into broken relationships, broken trust, a mother's broken heart. This is a story of human brokenness, and it's a story that reveals beauty, God's relentless love, God's shimmering offer of life-giving water for those who thirst. Do you hear an echo? God's promise was that both 
Isaac and Ishmael would be blessed. God's promise is for insiders and for outsiders. In God's economy, there is abundance, always enough for everyone. Sarah's failure of generosity was an indication that she didn't understand the character of her God. The poet of the Psalms provides a lovely description of God's character. Listen to what the psalmist says and allow yourself as you listen to sink into, to contemplate the true nature of God. The writer of the Psalms joyfully proclaims, God builds up, gathers outcasts, heals broken hearts, binds up wounds, keeps track of the stars and assigns them each a value by naming them. God understands, God lifts up, God offers the water necessary for growth, God feeds. Do you hear an echo here? I certainly do. It's a list of the actions attributed to Jesus. Healing, feeding, gathering outcasts, binding up wounds. I wonder, aren't these the same actions we, Jesus' followers, are called to engage in for the healing of the world? I think that this call to action, this call to mend and to heal, doesn't arise out of shame or remorse, but emerges naturally within those who take time to deeply contemplate the beauty and the brokenness of all that surrounds us. The seeds of hope lie within the practice of contemplation, intentionally slowing down and noticing enables the budding desire for a different world to blossom and a shimmering vision of potential beauty to emerge for each and every one of us. Leonard Cohen said, there's a crack in everything. That's how the light gets in. When we arrive at that point, when we can see beauty in the midst of brokenness, catch a glimpse of God's abundant provision for all creation, the command of the psalmist just might echo in our hearts. And those words of the psalm are written as a command. Praise God. God's blessings are abundant and praise is the only appropriate response. Sing your praise, sing joyfully to the God of all life. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. Praise God for all that love has done. Creator Christ, then spirit one. Friends, may you see beauty in the midst of this broken world. And may a song of praise to God echo in your hearts and dance joyfully from your lips and through your life. Amen. Unrest surrounds us. Seek beauty in brokenness. See through eyes of hope.
I'm going to invite you to listen to the song, Look Around, and as you listen, consider what we might lift up to God in, together in prayer this morning. When you're tired and feel you can't get through, uncertainty comes over you, just look around. When your problems seem too much to bear, unsure if there's someone who cares, just look around. Whether stranger, neighbor, family, or on each other in tough times we can depend look around kindness love is ours to share we can see it everywhere though it might seem like forever look around even in the darkest night things are gonna be all right We'll get through this together, just look around. I'm going to ask Meg and John, or one of the two of you, to unmute everybody so that we can share our prayers with one another this morning. You might have to um, allow them to unmute you. You might have to agree to that. What are we have one. Today? Um, my mother has been diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis recently, which is challenging and she's just in the beginning process, but she's kind of overwhelmed with it all. So just lift up her spirits and her body. Yeah. And what's her name, Michelle? Her first name? Ramona. Ramona. Where else are we? Celebrations, concerns. I have a concern. Um, Thomas hasn't been feeling terrific. Um, and so he has seen his GPs and it doesn't look like anything typical. And so they're trying to help us figure it out. Um, so just that he feels better, he doesn't feel good. He's having headaches. Um, so we're, prayers for him. Absolutely, Melissa. Prayers for Thomas who hasn't been feeling well. Where else are we? Celebrations, anyone? Happy Father's Day to Happy all the Father's dads Day. out yeah. there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. To all those who are our actual dads and to all of those who have supported us like dads do. Um, sometimes I... I just, on Father's Day, on Mother's Day, I always want to remember those people who are like dads to us or who like, are like mothers to us, who care for us in ways that are exceptional. So let me gather us all together in prayer now. I'm going to leave you unmuted so that we can greet each other with a sign of peace after this. Let's pray. Gracious God, our world suffers from so much brokenness. Today, we lift to you people who suffer oppression, especially our sisters and brothers of color. We ask that you help us find beautiful ways to begin mending hearts, mending our beautiful planet, mending everything that we encounter, which is broken. May beauty arise out of that which had not seemed beautiful to us in its brokenness. May the beauty lying beneath be revealed. 
merciful God, be present with all who are suffering in body, mind, or spirit, including Robin, Marion, Robert, Wayne, and Mary, Jeannie, Lily, Peg, Howard, and Juliana, Phyllis, Amos, Suzanne, Jean, and Judd, Paul, Stephen, Casey, Jeff, Bev, Jerry, Ramona, and Thomas, and those we hold in our hearts. Hear us now as we pray together using the words Jesus taught us to say, Our Father, as we forgive our debtors, it is not the temptation not to deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. The power and the glory forever. Let's offer each other a sign of God's peace. A wave. Say hello. Good morning. Hi, everybody. <laughs> peace, Hi, everyone. Morning. Hi, John. Good peace. to see everyone. Good morning, Good morning everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Peace, morning. Michelle and Marty. Happy Father's Day to all fathers. Yes, happy yes. Father's Day. Happy Father's Day, Richard. Thanks. <laughs> and Bob, who is off screen, who is always here but never seen. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. All right. And I'm going to um, invite uh, John and Meg to mute people now so that we can sing out in our own spaces without everybody else having to hear us. Please join. The world is so varied and beautiful. Seek wisdom wherever it is to be found. And may the goodness of the creator, 
the compassionship and companion of Christ, and the insight of the Spirit infuse you this day and every day. Amen.